This is Ben Shapiro, a Jewish man who asks this Catholic bishop about how someone gets into heaven. So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? And the bishop's answer to Ben Shapiro will shock you. So what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? No. God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. So that's the, the privileged route. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Meanwhile, when this Catholic man I'm a Catholic asked this Christian pastor the same exact question uh, That's a very good question, Charlie. The pastor responded this way. The answer to that from the Word of God is they, they will all perish in hell. Now the question we'll answer in this video is which one of the two answered the question correctly? And by correctly, I mean according to the Word of God. Now let's first watch the full answer that the Catholic bishop gives to Ben Shapiro. Okay, so I promised awkward questions and so there <laughs> There shall be. So let's start okay. with the most awkward of the awkward questions. Yeah. I don't really care about this question particularly much, but I get this question a lot, which is, you know, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? I feel like I lead a pretty good life, a very religiously based life in which I try to keep not just the Ten Commandments, but a solid 603 other commandments as well. And I spend an awful lot of my time promulgating what I would consider to be Judeo-Christian virtues, particularly in Western societies. So what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? So at this point, Ben Shapiro sets up the question and told the bishop that his religion is practically a religion of works. It's what you do that gets you into heaven. And this question from Ben Shapiro to the bishop is a common question. In fact, it reminds me of John chapter 3 when Nicodemus, a man who's been keeping the Mosaic law and all the hundreds of other rules the Jews have made up from it, all his life and who was also a teacher of the law, he came to Jesus in the middle of the night, according to John chapter 3, and asked Jesus, how does a man get to heaven? What do I do to get to heaven? It's similar to that. And now here's the answer that the bishop gives him. Pay close attention to what he says. Am I basically screwed here? No. The Catholic view, go back to uh, the Second Vatican Council, says it very clearly. I mean, Christ is the privileged route to salvation. I mean, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. So that's the, the privileged route. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Now, they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. So, I mean, the grace is coming from Christ, but it might be received according to your uh, conscience. So, if you're following your conscience sincerely, or in your case, you're following the commandments of the law sincerely, yeah, you can be saved. Now, I truly hope that you guys are catching this. This is not about human opinion, it's about what the Bible teaches. After Bishop Barron cited John chapter 3, he went beyond John chapter 3 and cited something about the Vatican teachings. Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. And now listen to the exact same question coming from a Catholic man to a Christian pastor and watch how the Christian pastor answers. Hi, um, I'm a Catholic. I've been a Catholic all of my life. That's 75 years. The question I'm going to ask is a very, very basic and has been bothering me for many, many years of my adult life. Do the billions of non-Christian denomination I'm talking about the Jewish, the Buddhist, the sure. Confucius, Mormons, and so forth, that truly believe in their fate, that, that lived a very good life according to their fate. My question is, is there salvation, a heaven for them, or are they all condemned to hell? Yeah, that's a very good question. What's your name? Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Ed Simmons. Uh, that's a very good question, Charlie. Um, that the answer to that from the Word of God is they, they will all perish in hell because there is only one way to go to heaven. There is no salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you will die in your sins to the Jewish leaders because you believe not on me. Because you believe not on me. John 3, 16, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish. This is an answer you can cross-reference in the Bible. This is not coming from men's tradition or the Vatican's teachings. There is only one heaven and there is only one way into heaven and that is through faith in Christ. It, it, is, um, it is the only hope. That is why we are told to go to the ends of the earth, preach the gospel to every creature. So all who perish without the knowledge of Christ, die in their sins, and go everlastingly to hell. Now the degree of punishment in hell will vary, but what makes it vary is not the goodness of the person. 
because no person is good before God. No person. Only God is good. Jesus said that. No person is good. No person is good enough to earn heaven. The only difference in hell will be that the people who heard about Jesus Christ and rejected Him will have a greater punishment than the people who didn't hear about Him. Now let's go back to what the bishop says and answer with what Jesus himself says in John chapter 3. Jesus himself in John chapter 3 verse 5 says to Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And down below in John chapter 3 verse 14, Jesus explains further what that means to Nicodemus. Jesus said to Nicodemus, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's referring to his crucifixion. And then in verse 15, Jesus says this, that's the key verse, so that everyone who believes will have eternal life in him. It's not according to the teachings of the Vatican. It's not according to the tradition of men. The way that you have eternal life is by believing in the one who will be lifted up just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. That is the way to eternal life. It is by believing in the Son of God. Now that doesn't conduce to a complete relativism. I, we still would say the privileged route and, and the, the route that God is, has offered to humanity is, is the route of his son. But no, you can be saved. Uh, even Vatican II says that an atheist of goodwill can be saved. Because in following his conscience, if he does, John Henry Newman said the conscience is the aboriginal vicar of Christ in the soul. It's a very interesting characterization. That it is, in fact, the voice of Christ. If he's the Logos made flesh, right? He's the divine mind or reason made flesh. That when I follow my conscience, I'm following him, whether I know it explicitly or not. So even the atheist, Vatican II teaches, of goodwill can be saved. Now you can already see the tension between what scripture teaches and what the Vatican teaches when it comes to your salvation. And I don't want my opinion or anybody's opinion to shine through this video. I want the scriptures to shine through and shed light on how to get to heaven. And again, in Acts chapter 4, the Apostle Peter, whom the Catholic Church believes was the first pope, which is not true, by the way, says this about salvation. And there's the key verse, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Peter says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among mankind by which we must be saved. Peter did not talk about the Vatican teachings that a man can be saved apart from faith in Jesus Christ. So as I said, the bishop's answer deviates from scripture or at the very least adds to the scriptures. And there's a grave danger in that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So is Catholicism act-based or faith-based? Because this has been sort of the traditional distinction between Judaism, for example, and Christianity, yeah. is Judaism is a very acts-based religion where it's all about what you do in this life and that earns you points in heaven. Uh, and then there's the faith-based religions that are more based on you believe in the truth, the way, and the life, and now you're in. Where, where does Catholicism actually stand, or is that division too star? No, I, I would say it's love-based. Uh, God is love. God so loved the world, he sent his only son. We're being drawn into the divine love. The verse he quoted, verse 16, John chapter 3, for God so loved the world, which means God loved the world in this manner. This is the manner in which God loved the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So as you can see, the perishing does not depend on the love because the love that God showed the world is that he gave his son. Now the perishing is based on whether or not you put your faith in him. So salvation is by faith alone. It's pretty clear. Jesus himself says again in John chapter 8, while speaking to the Sadducees and Pharisees and the religious Jews in verse 24, John 8, 24, Jesus says, Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Unless you believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, you will die in your sins. Unless you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will die in your sins. And according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, unless you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will not be saved. For with the heart a person believes, leading to righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, leading to salvation. Although the love of God is expressed through the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, on the cross, the way that love is appropriated to us is by putting our faith in Christ and Christ alone. So we use the language of cooperation with grace, and that grace comes first, accepted in faith. Luther was right to that extent. If Luther had said, gratia prima, we'd be fine. 
grace first. Well, the problem with that is that Luther could never say gratia primo because the Bible says sola gratia, grace alone. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, the Bible teaches, for by grace you have been saved through faith in that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. In other words, our salvation does not begin with grace and gets completed by our works. It is all of grace, for by grace you have been saved. The Bible does not teach, for by grace plus works you have been saved. You will never find that in scripture. But watch what Bishop Barron says next to Ben Shapiro. So of course it begins with grace, but then God, who's not competitive with us, he, he wants us fully alive. And so God invites us now to respond, body and soul, everything we've got, in love to the love that he's offered us. So I put it that way. It's grace and then cooperation with grace, which manifests itself in a life of love. And that's what, what salvation consists in. According to Catholic teachings, the grace of God cooperates with our works. But according to the Bible, it is grace alone apart from any works. Hence why Luther could never say gratia primo, but he said, Sola gratia, grace alone. Now, to strengthen this biblical position that we are saved by grace alone through faith apart from any works, we can take Abraham as an example. And Abraham in the Old Testament was saved by faith. For example, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible teaches this about Abraham. Even so, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And verse 7 says, Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. And we see this repeated again in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. For by the deeds of the law, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in the sight of God. And finally, we can conclude that Bishop Barron is teaching another gospel, a false gospel, a gospel of faith plus works. And the Apostle Paul warns us against anyone who preaches another gospel. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed accursed. Any gospel that deviates from the clear teachings of scripture is a false gospel. And now let's close this video with the comments of MacArthur to the Catholic man and I have some commentary that I gave in a previous video in that section as well. Now the other thing to say is this, that even if you believe in Christ, even if you believe in Christ as God and Christ dying on the cross and Christ being raised from the dead and Christ being Lord and all of those things, that may not be enough to get you into heaven either. Because in Matthew 7 it says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name and that in your name, and he'll say, I depart, depart from me, I never knew you. So you can know about Christ, and you can know that he lived a holy life and born of a virgin, and that he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, and reigns, and is returning, and, and I go to heaven. Here's the key. You must trust Christ for your salvation alone and reject any works of your own as having any contribution to your salvation. Doesn't matter how many times you went to church, doesn't matter how many humanly good deeds you did, doesn't many, matter how many times you took the Mass, for example, in a Catholic situation, doesn't matter how many times you went to confession, it doesn't matter how bad you felt about the sins that you did, it doesn't matter how many rosaries you said, it doesn't matter uh, any of those things, th th those, none of those things individually and all of those things collectively cannot save a person. And here again, that's a wonderful biblical and gospel point that John MacArthur is making when it comes to salvation. A lot of people believe that you must trust in Jesus Christ and you must have some kind of good works on top of it, which is what Catholicism is all about. It is Christ plus works. It is Christ plus your deeds. It is believing plus doing something. If you add anything to Christ, then you have no gospel. If you add anything to believing in Christ, in Christ alone, then you have no salvation. The key is to believe in Christ, in Him alone. Deny your works, deny your self-righteousness, and put your faith in Him because He alone, without anything else, 
can save you. A person will be saved by faith in Christ alone, recognizing that in my flesh dwells no good thing. By the deeds of the law will no flesh be justified. You can't earn your way in by being good. You can only receive salvation when you know you're not good enough and you cry out to be forgiven of your sin by the sheer grace of God based upon the, the death and the provision of Christ on the cross, okay? Your good works won't save you. The amount of time you went to church will not save you. The fact that you are born into a Christian family, the fact that you are associated with some church, the fact that you are some kind of missionary somewhere or you did some kind of good works for the church or donated money to Christianity, none of that will save you. The only thing that will save you it is Christ in Christ alone. That is the reason why the reformers argued during the Reformation that faith alone in Christ alone, apart from any works, will save you to the glory of God alone. Oh, one last thing. Uh, okay. I meant to add this. I am leaving the Catholic Church and hope to join this church. We welcome you. <laughs> now, you folks over there, you folks over there, you need to open your arms to, to Charlie, right? And let him know we love having him here. You understand the gospel, right, the way I explained it? Yes. All right, Charlie. Never too late, right? You're the youngest looking 75. What happened to me? I don't get it. <laughs> okay. All right. It is so amazing to hear that after 75 years, Charlie is finally leaving the Catholic Church to join a gospel preaching in a Bible believing church. As I was listening to this Q&A throughout this week and preparing for this video, I've been thinking about one thing. And that one thing is for us to be clear when it comes to the presentation of the gospel. And even more so clearer when someone asks us about salvation. We need to be clear, concise, and point them to the Savior, to Christ in Christ alone. It is the same thing that the Apostle Paul and Silas did in Acts chapter 16 when the Philippian jailer asked them, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That is it. No works, no rituals, no pilgrimage to Mecca. Simply believe in Him and Him alone. 